Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to wire a DIN rail DB board with two neutral rails. Notice I have a stove isolator over here, I have a plug outlet here with a plug circuit connected over there and I have a lamp circuit in the far right. There is my light switch and my lamp circuit. On the one side I have a stove circuit protected by overload protection and another backup protection. On the other side I have earth leakage protection protecting my loads here and then I still have overload protection backing up the overload protection here for these load circuits. I'll now demonstrate how to wire this. So this is going to be a neutral rail and this is going to be a neutral rail. I have my main switch here offering overcurrent protection and disconnection. I have two circuit breakers here. One is a 32 amp circuit breaker which is going to be for a stove circuit. I've got another 10 amp circuit breaker here which could be for a lighting circuit. And then over here I've got my earth leakage protection. And then after the earth leakage protection, I have three additional circuit breakers here for plug circuit, or whatever else you want to connect. Now, keeping in mind that your plugs and your geyser have to be protected by earth leakage, but your stove circuit does not have to be protected by earth leakage. And some people have the stove circuit before earth leakage because of nuisance tripping. So in this setup, my earth leakage is sitting over here and my main switch with overcurrent protection is sitting over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a stove circuit over here and I'm going to have a plug circuit over here. In this circuit, I'm going to have three loads. I'm going to have a stove circuit over here I'm not going to use this circuit breaker. I'm then going to have a plug circuit over here. In this case, I will connect a lighting circuit here, but it will be protected by earth leakage. In your setup, it may be different. The first thing I need to do is make sure that the upstream supply is off. Now, in this case, the upstream supply is off. I was able to disconnect the feeder circuit from the supply. In your case, you might find that this is still connected. Please be careful, there is a significant shock hazard when working with DB boards. Right, make sure your main switch is down and from the output of the main switch I now need to connect to a neutral rail. Notice I have a neutral coming in over there, the neutral being the black wire and the red being the live wire in South Africa. So I'm now going to connect the neutral to my first neutral rail which is over here. Now in your case you will find that your neutral rail will probably be in black black signifying the neutral. In this DB board they have bus bars over here but they are not demarcated with color coding. So you can decide which bus bar you want to be your neutral and which bus bar you want for your earthing. Notice that the earth bus bar is usually green and in this case I've chosen my earth bus bar at the top over here. So all my earth wires will need to connect to the top right of this DB board. Now from the output of my main switch I need to go to my first neutral bus bar. Now there is my neutral wire coming from my output of my main switch to my neutral bus bar. Notice the thickness of the cable has to be matched to the circuit breaker. In this case, this is a 63 amp circuit breaker. So I'm going to use a 16 millimeter conductor. I now need to connect the live from the output of my main switch, looping it round to the top of the input of my stove circuit breaker. Also noting the 63 amp circuit breaker and I need to use the same thickness cable for my live wire. Now I've gone from the output of my main switch to the input of my stove circuit breaker. Now in this case I have a circuit breaker here, a circuit breaker here and then the live for my earth leakage. So that means that all three of these would be connected together because they would all have the same potential. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a bus bar to short out that connection, that connection and that connection. Bus bars come in longer lengths and I'm going to use a hacksaw to cut it. The current rating of the bus bar must be able to handle 63 amps. I put the bus bar in front of the cable so that it does not deform the bus bar when I am tightening the terminals. Right, so I've now connected the output from my main switch looping around here to the input of my stove circuit. The live from the main switch is then also shorted to this terminal. If I wanted to add a lighting circuit here, for example, that wouldn't be protected by earth leakage, I could then over here, the bus bar is also shorting to the input of this earth leakage circuit breaker. So that means that I've gone from here to there, there and there. 
So the main switch is now feeding into the live input of my earth leakage circuit breaker. Now for my stove circuit, which is not protected by earth leakage, I just need to connect the stove circuit, the load circuit over here. So here is my stove wire, here and here. And this is a 32 amp circuit breaker, so I do need to use a conductor which is able to carry more than 32 amps. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire my stove circuit. The stove circuit is not protected by earth leakage, so I can now connect the live from the output of my stove circuit breaker directly to the live wire which is going to be wired to my stove isolator switch. Now the neutral for the stove must be connected to this neutral rail because this is the neutral rail that is not protected by earth leakage. It is only connected via the main switch. So now I can wire my neutral wire. Now the earth wire needs to be connected to the common earth point at the top. Right, so having a look at my stove circuit, it is actually connected. The neutral is there and the live is there. So if I had to energize this by lifting up that circuit breaker, the stove would now work when I lift the stove circuit breaker because it is not protected by earth leakage. Earth leakage is on this side of the DB board. And as you can see, I haven't even wired the earth leakage circuit breaker. So the stove is now connected. Now what I want to do is wire the earth leakage side to provide these loads with power and also protect them via earth leakage. What I need to do now is just connect a neutral wire from this neutral rail round to the neutral of the earth leakage. Right, so to sum up, from the output of my main switch, I've gone round there into the input of this circuit breaker, but this is also shorted to there and there, giving the earth leakage circuit breaker a live connection. The only thing that's missing now is the neutral, and that is why I've taken the neutral from the output of the main switch, there it goes, into the bus bar, same circuit, round there into the input of the earth leakage. Now, from the output of the earth leakage, I just need to connect a neutral and a live. Now, because this is a split neutral system, meaning I've got neutral before earth leakage and a neutral after earth leakage, what I need to do is connect a neutral wire to this neutral rail so that my other loads, my plugs and say, for example, a lighting circuit can be connected to this neutral rail. Right, so there is the neutral from the earth leakage going to this neutral rail. Now I just need to get a live wire from the output of earth leakage and I need to loop it round to the inputs of these circuit breakers. Remember in South Africa the live input goes in the top of the circuit breaker and the output comes towards the bottom. Right, so in this case the live comes out from the earth leakage looping round to the input of the circuit breaker. Now to make it simpler, I've put the live this way around. I could have also looped it that way around, but I want it to be clear for the video that you can see that the live is coming out from earth leakage and going into these load circuits. Now I need to have a connection to this circuit breaker, this circuit breaker, and the circuit breaker, which means I once again need a bus bar and I will connect that across all three circuit breakers using my bus bar that can handle more than 60 amps. Right, so my load circuits are now connected to the live wire from the earth leakage and the neutral is connected to this bus bar over here. So all I need to do now is connect my load circuits. For example, this will be my plug circuit. This could also be a plug circuit. Maybe this is a lighting circuit that you want protected by earth leakage. So what I want to do now is I want to wire my plug circuit to this circuit breaker. So I just need to connect my plugs wire over here. Now the live going to my plug circuit is connected here. But now the neutral needs to be connected to this neutral rail because this whole circuit is now protected via earth leakage. So I now need to connect this neutral to this neutral rail. Now the earth needs to be connected to the common earth point there at the top. All the earths are connected to each other. Right, so my plug circuit is now connected from the output of the plug circuit breaker. The neutral is connected to this neutral rail and my earth is connected to the common earth. Now for explanation purposes, I'm gonna connect one more load, which will just be a light circuit. So I'm just going to take my load wire and connect it here on this 10 amp circuit breaker. And very important, the associated neutral for this lighting circuit must be connected to this neutral rail because it is on this side of the earth leakage. And lastly, the earth wire for that illumination circuit must also be connected to the common earth rail. 
now everything is connected. I apologize for this wiring a bit untidy because we use flexible cables so that we can reuse it in the lab. Yours will be neater. Right, so now let's have a look at the wiring setup. From the supply, live and neutral, coming into the main switch, which is also offering overcurrent protection and disconnection in the one circuit breaker. The output of that is fed to my first load circuit, which means that if I switch this on and I lift that circuit breaker, I've effectively energized my stove circuit. Even though the earth leakage is off, my stove circuit will work. My plug circuit and my lighting circuit will not operate because my earth leakage is off. I have to lift my earth leakage circuit breaker and lift my plug circuit and my illumination circuit in order to have those two loads working. If I drop the main switch, everything in this DB board goes offline. The stove is offline and the plugs and the lights in this circuit. Even though the earth leakage is still up, because the main switch has been dropped, it disconnects everything. So now everything is off, but keeping in mind that those two terminals over there are still alive. The output there is no longer live. I'll now show you the load circuits energized. Right, now I've energized the supply. Please note there's a serious shock hazard here. You should have your DB board closed, but I'm just showing the workings of the circuit which I've just built. Now, having a look here, the main switch is down. My isolator for my stove is on. The plug outlet switch is on. My light circuit is on, but notice that there's no illumination here. My soldering iron light is off and my lamp is off because my main switch is off. So I first have to switch on my main switch, but now, everything is still off. The reason being is that I have to lift my stove circuit in order for the stove circuit to energize. So there is the illumination shown here telling me that my stove circuit would be activated. Now what I want to bring to your attention is notice that everything is still off even though my stove circuit is on. That is demonstrating that the stove circuit is before earth leakage. Now if I want to switch on my plug circuit and my light circuit, notice that they are not going on. It will only go on if the earth leakage is lifted. There we go. So my lamp is now on and the light for my soldering iron has now energized. So what we can see here is that earth leakage is protecting those loads over there because when I drop the earth leakage, it disconnects those two loads, the plug and the lighting circuit. Notice that the stove circuit, the illumination is still on even though the earth leakage is off. Now if I lift the earth leakage, notice my lamp and my plug circuit is on, but if I drop the stove circuit, notice that the stove circuit has nothing to do with the plug outlet and my lamp circuit. Only if I drop the main switch do I now disconnect everything. The stove isolator, the plug outlet, as well as the lamp Everything is now off, even though I can lift all these circuit breakers, it will make no difference because this disconnects the current to all the loads. Right, so that's how you wire a DB board with two neutral rails on the DIN rail DB board.